Good morning, foxes and badgers classes, and welcome to our reading lesson today. So today we are going to be having a look at another story by Jennifer Killick, and this one is called Mo, Lottie and the Junkers. So you'll find the extract on our class page. We're going to first of all have a look at one of the pages in the book, which is a little bit different than a page we would find in most books, and see how this might capture the reader's interest. So let's have a read together. Opening the box. This box belongs to Mo and Lottie. Do not open except in an emergency. For example, if we have been imprisoned, abducted or violently murdered. Instructions. Open box. Locate USB stick and insert into a relevant computer port, aka the memory stick hole. Ah, so USB stick, that's like my memory stick that I use so I can open things on my computer. Open folder named Junkers. Password is Junkers Suck. All caps, no spaces. Caps meaning capital letters. Lottie's idea. Locate the AV clip, Mo and Lottie, our vlog. Press play. Further instructions will follow. Do not look at anything else in the box until we say. Really though, don't, or it won't make sense. Everything else is in your hands. P.S. Thanks and good luck. Oh, now how have they included this to capture the reader's interest? Well, I know there's a few things that caught my interest in here. First of all, I've never seen a page in a book like this before, especially the first page of the book. It seems very strange to me. They seem almost spy-like, don't they, like our book on Monday. I think it's very strange that they think there might be an emergency where they need to put this together. I also think this is quite strange at the end where they say, thanks and good luck. Well, what do you think they might need good luck with? I'm very intrigued. Have a think about how you think it might capture the reader's interest as well. Okay, we're going to have a look then at the next few pages within the book. So, you will see that some of these pages are set out slightly differently than our normal reading books. File accessed, restricted folder, password required, enter password. Password accepted. Select file. File selected. Loading. Error code 79. Reloading. Audio visual player standing by. Buffering. System ready. Press play to activate. Ah, so is this where they're getting the video ready to watch? Now this bit as well of the story is a bit strange because it is set out like a play script rather than a story. Vlogger 1, female, approximately aged 10 years, approximate height 130 centimetres, light brown hair. Who do we think this person might be then if we think back to the previous page? Okay, so this is telling us some information about that character. And now the character is about to speak. Is it working now? She approaches the reading device and her face fills the screen, showing a scattering of amber, fre amber freckles across her nose and upper cheeks. The footage jumps as though the device is being shaken, and several loud thumps reverberate through the speaker. Ah, so the only thing that she said in all of this was, is it working now? The rest gives us some information about what is happening, almost like stage directions, doesn't it? Several loud thumps reverberate through the speaker. So that means we can hear them always bouncing through the speaker. Vlogger 2. Male. Approximate age 10 years. Approximate height 128 centimetres. Ginger hair. Ah, if I think back to the previous page, I think I might be able to work out who that is as well. It won't be for long if you keep hitting it like that. Vlogger 1. Well, one of us has to do something. We don't have much time. Check it again. Blogger 2. Pops. It's recording, okay? 
Let's get on with it. Wait, what are you doing? Blogger one. I'm cutting my hair, obviously. These people are seeing me for the first time. I want to get my look right. I'm thinking catless plaits with a few strands coming loose to show I've been running for my life. Blogger two. But they can see you doing it, Lottie. They know you're just sitting on a chair in my bedroom. Anyway, it doesn't matter what you look like. <sighs> Blogger one, Lottie. Ah, so I was right with who I thought it was going to be. That's an unhelpful comment, Mo. And I'm going to ignore it. Now pause the recording while I find a hairband. Ah, she's talking to Mo, so I was right about who Blogger two is as well. Mo sighs again, slides off his chair and stomps over to the camera. A streak of dirt can be seen down the left side of his nose. A click can be heard and the recording pauses. A second click. Mo mutters a word which sounds like it could be a swear, though it's too quiet to be sure. Mo. Can we go on? Lottie. I'll start, shall I? Good. First, I will state my name. For the recording, I am Lottie Magnolia Button and this is... No. No. Nothing. Do it properly, Mo. They're not going to be able to identify your burnt remains if they only know you as Mo. Our lives could depend on this. Mo. Fine. Morris Albert Appleby. Nothing. Albert? Really? And I thought Morris was questionable. No. Are you serious? Your middle name is Magnolia. Magnolia. What even is that? Nutty. It's a flower. Beautiful but tough. Everyone knows that. Honestly, who would have thought that you, Mo Appleby, are destined to be one of the saviours of man and womankind? No. Just get on with it, Lottie. We don't know how much time we have before. Lottie, they find us. You're right. OK, this is a message. A terribly important message. If you are watching this message, no. They're probably going to stop watching if you say message one more time. Lottie. If you are watching this message, then it means something has happened to us and the future of the world is in your hands. Mo, we can't tell our parents because they won't believe us. Lottie, and we can't tell the police because we don't know who we can trust. No, anybody could be one of them. Anybody could be a junker. Ooh, I wonder what a junker is. Lottie, and if you're watching this, then it means they got us. We're probably dead. No, we're probably not dead. We might have been junked and that's almost as bad. Lottie, and I am ever so important, dear viewer. The world needs me and Mo, especially Mo. So just keep watching and you'll understand everything I'm going to explain to tell you our story. No, I'm going to tell a story, Lottie. You'll tell it wrong. No way, Mo. You'll tell it boringly. <sighs> if by boringly you mean truthfully, then yes, I will. It's my story as much as yours, Mo. I don't see why you should get to tell it. Shall we take it in turns then? OK, I'll go first. No, I'll go first. The story starts with me. Only technically. Right, only technically, rather than in your imagination. So anyway, courageous viewer, please hear our story and take action. You might be our only chance for survival. And hurry, maybe there's still time. Maybe you can save us. I wonder what their story is going to be about. I wonder what they might need saving from. Okay, so our first part of the story is told from Mo's perspective. The start of the story. Hurry up, Mo, they're here, Mum called to me from the empty hallway. I'm doing a check, I said, standing in what used to be my bedroom at 79 Morello Road. It was now just a room waiting to belong to someone who wasn't me. Ah, so we do we think that Mo might be moving house? Just one more, my love. I know it's hard to say goodbye, but we really have to go. We've got a new adventure ahead of us. After 10 years of just me, mum and our cat, Sprojia, the time has come for us to become part of a new family. We were leaving our house, the one I've lived in since I was born. 
the one I knew as well as I knew myself, and moving into a house across the street. Even worse, we were going to be living with mum's, I don't want to say boyfriend, because one, she's too old to have a boyfriend, and two, it's gross. We were going to be living with mum's Spencer, and his daughters, Lottie and Sadie. Ah, I wonder if it was Lottie who was mentioned previously. I could talk for hours about his, how this was the worst thing that had ever happened in my life, but Lottie will use it as an excuse to interrupt, so I'll just say that I wasn't happy about it. But mum was, and my mum is the kindest, coolest, most awesome mum in the world. She has a smile that fills her whole face, and she always smells like pancakes and strawberries. My dad disappeared before I was born, before mum even knew she was having me. He just walked out one day and never came back. That made her sad for a long time. Not sad the whole time, but there were moments. Like when I was having trouble with some kids at school and my teacher called her in. She said she wished my dad was there to help us. And when we went on holiday, I could see her looking around, hoping she might see him. But then she met Spencer and those moments happened less often. Before I said goodbye, I had to complete one last check to make sure I wasn't leaving anything important. I knelt on the floorboards and crawled slowly across the room, back and forth, until I'd covered every centimetre. My carpet had been worn out and torn in one corner, where Schrodinger had scratched at it, so Mum thought it was best to pull it up and throw it out. The room looked so different without it. There were gaps between the wooden planks, and I was worried that I might have dropped something, that something tiny might get left behind. And that's when I found the loose one. Oh, the loose one. In the cat clawed corner, one of the boards wobbled where I knelt on it. Through the crack at the edge, I could see something shining in the darkness underneath, a dull silver colour. I squished my fingers under the board and pulled. Oh, so Mo has found a loose floorboard within his bedroom that he's never noticed before, but it seems to have something underneath. Okay, so now we're moving on to Lottie's point of view. Sadie and I were desperate to see our new room, but Dad wouldn't let us go into the house until the others arrived. So we stood outside 124 Morello Road, a big white house with lots of wide windows that stood out amongst the narrow brown brick houses surrounded it. It was at the top of the hill and set back from the road, up some steep steps, so it was higher and bolder and looked more important than the other houses on the street. It gave me the impression that it was keeping a lookout over Morello Road. We waited by the door while the peculiar ginger boy who was going to be our new brother and the pretty ginger lady who was going to be our new mother had an intense discussion in the doorway of their old house, which happened to be opposite our new house. Have we worked out who this ginger boy and the ginger lady were? Ah, yes, that's Mo and Mo's mum, isn't it? I couldn't hear what they were saying, but it ended with the boy waiting until his mum had turned her back and then putting something shiny grey into his pocket. Oh, hold on, wasn't it something shiny grey? That he saw within that floorboard in his bedroom. Hello again girls, lovely to see you as always. Isn't this exciting? Our new mother smiled at us while dad put his arm around her and kissed her on the lips, which I still hadn't got used to. You remember Mo, she said. Hi Mo, I said. Hi, said Mo, looking at me as though he wished I was dead. Sadie, say hello. Dad said, pulling on one of her little pigtails. Meow, said Sadie, which was her way of saying hello. Try to use your words, Sadie, said Dad. Emma and Mo can't understand you like Lottie and I can. It's okay, we've got plenty of time to get to know each other, Emma said. Now Emma gave Sadie a bag of chocolate buttons. Say hello to Sadie, Mo. Hello to Sadie, Mo said, looking at Sadie as if he wished she was dead. Let's do it, shall we? Dad said, putting the key in the lock of our new front door. Yay! Emma laughed and clapped her hands. Sadie munched on her buttons. 
Mo kicked his shoes against the steps. Pineapple, I said to full silence, and because it seemed appropriate, we walked into the house. Oh, do not open. Hmm. Now, it sounds to me like there are two characters who are really keen to move into this house, Mo's mum and Lottie's dad. But actually, Mo doesn't seem too impressed, and neither does Lottie. I can tell that Mo isn't very impressed because it says he was kicking his shoes against the steps. And I know that's something I've seen people do before if they're a bit frustrated with something. He might be a bit frustrated that he's having to move to this house. Okay, if we go back to our PowerPoint then. So as always, we're starting off with our retrieval questions. So these are the ones where the answer is in the text. So have a read through the text and find the answer in there. Remember to skim and scan. So when it says, what is Mo's mum's boyfriend called? Let's look at those words, see if we can find them within the text. And then after that, there are some questions which require inference or a bit more of a discussion on your behalf so that you can find the answer. Please send us your answers when you are done.